Welcome back everybody. Let me introduce our next speaker presentation, the Community Projects Performance and Community Engagement and introduce to you and welcome Peter Remfrey to main stage. Peter is the Chief Executive Officer of the Tantipi Group of Companies and is a proud Tiwi man of non-Indigenous descent from Wurundjeri. I hope I said that right, Peter, on Bathurst Island in the Northern Territory. With a mission to inspire 1,000 Indigenous employees to break the welfare dependency by 2030 and possessing over 25 years experience in specific senior management roles across both non-government organisations and private industry. Peter's primary focus is not only employment, but extensive workforce development, including but not limited to cultural preservation programs and socioeconomic growth. So please welcome Peter Renfrey to the stage. Fantastic. Well, thanks very, thanks very much for that that lovely intro. That's that was fantastic. You got those, you got those names names pretty well down pat, which is always great to to see. Now, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to today to explore the many local community engagement strategies, particularly involving remote Indigenous communities and setting up for project success. Now, I'd like to start today, like my previous predecessor, Raymond, I'd like to start today by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land from which I come from, come to you today, the Yagara and Turrbal people of, of Mianjang, and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging, and recognise their continuing connection to land and water and community. So as an introduction, um, I'm a proud Tiwi man of non-Indigenous descent. Um, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Tantipi Group, which includes not only both profit for purposes and not-for-profit service providers, but civil contracting and managed workforce solutions to industry. Now, all of which, all of which those businesses share a sing one single purpose. Together, we empower people to achieve. So through our fully integrated business model, we provide holistic and turnkey solutions that not, not only empower people to achieve, but creates change where it is needed the most through the foundation of key partnerships developed over a lifetime in the sector. Now, so from, our, from our ability to provide work readiness and early workforce development strategies via our community organisation, um, through, through to our specialised managed workforce provider, and dedicated construction business Gungaloo Enterprises, we are truly empowering people to achieve. Now, a bit about me. I grew up on a small Aboriginal community called Warham Younger on Bathurst Island, north of Darwin in the late 70s, early 80s in the Northern Territory. Um, now, being fluent in, in the Tiwi dialect up until about the age of 10 and through, through this in-depth understanding and lifelong connection to the Indigenous culture, Specifically, the Tiwi people, I have been given a rare and unique gift. A gift of learning and insight into the, both the kinship and cultural protocols of one of the longest living cultures in the world. Growing up in Warramyanga, I consider myself extremely privileged to have been enriched by this culture. And furthermore, been embraced by the members of the traditional owner group. Through the understanding of their culture and lifelong connection with the people and the land, I possess a strong commitment to the empowerment of the Indigenous people of Australia. Incorporating social economic advancement. Now, I think there's still a picture around somewhere in the ethos of me around four to five years old, all dressed up in on TV, TV grand final day as the Tapalinga mascot. Um, the local AFL, TV Island AFL team my father played with back when we were there. And, and to this day, we still sponsor them. So it's, it's all about that lifelong connection. So engaged across the socioeconomic advancement and holistic service sectors, the Tantipi Group is a national group of companies with a clear mission of empowering 1,000 Indigenous families Australia-wide to holistically break the cycle of generational welfare dependency by 2030. The actual Tan Tipi Group logo behind me has been inspired and derived from the Tan Tipi homelands on the Tiwi Islands. Centered to the logo is a Eurikape totem, sand and sunset on Tan Tipi Beach. Now, Eurikape is a Tiwi word meaning saltwater crocodile. 
The Eureka Pay holds great cultural significance for the Tiwi people and is one of many dreamings totems inherited through the father. With the dreaming of totem comes responsibility passed down from birth. Now, as a young Muruntiti or white boy growing up rich in the Tiwi culture, Tantipi Homelands is where I did my ceremony and where connection to country is for me. Listen, they say, at the end of the day, they say knowledge is power. Well, in this case, I believe so. The power to create change from a culturally sensitive perspective to drive acceptance is, in my opinion, half the battle of driving Indigenous engagement and employment outcomes. What a journey. It's not over yet. So through this journey, I've held many operational roles within remote communities dedicated to the empowerment of Indigenous people through increasing employment opportunities and what seems like the never ending battle against generational welfare dependency. Okay, now, what is true Indigenous community engagement? Now, that piece is often thrown around a fair bit. So in its raw form, it is basically grassroots relationship building within communities, not networking, not supply briefings, not procurement panels, plain and simple, it's getting on the ground locally, speaking to the right people, the right time without an agenda or preconceived on the idea on desired outcomes. Now, community engagement often, often starts with traditional owners, right? Or custodians of the project area, mainly due to the sensitivities around cultural heritage, complex, complexities in it of any new project. However, to gain a true understanding of local barriers, you need to not only move away from that compliance piece, that is cultural heritage, and develop real long lasting friendships long before the project commences. For any community, pro any community engagement process to work, you need a long term strategy, one that often gets forgotten about in the race for financial success. The real long term benefit of this concept is an organisation willing to develop these strategies, that is, you are locally engaged with those who possess a deep understanding of the project area. Yes, I agree. For any project to, to be achieved on time and under budget, we have deliverables that are commercially driven. However, I do also firmly believe the key to long-term success in the procurement of viable and cost-effective projects are sound and effective Indigenous engagement strategies. So it means to me, quite simple, is a long-term and meaningful connection with the Indigenous business community, traditional owners of the land, and a real focus on changing the communities in which you work and live of those you employ. Now, if I cast my mind back, one such Indigenous engagement model that I had the, I had the pleasure in implementing was a highly successful employment and workforce development program that not only provided capacity around Indigenous we averaged around 20 to 30% of the total workforce, but built a social economic advancement through the establishment of 100% indigenous owned and managed workforce provider that provided 750 Aboriginal employees with employment. Now, in my time I've worked with and been part of some really great organizations that have seen real economic and moral, moral morally beneficial of these strategies in play. And I must say there is currently a lot of good work being, being done within my networks nationally to increase indigenous engagement across the business community. Now, what if the wider business community took a proactive view on, on localized indigenous employment and workforce development? What if we saw a dramatic increase in both employment and business engagement within specific project areas by traditional owners. Would we still would we still have the squeeze the employment sector? Would we still have the squeeze within the employment sector? Well I firmly believe if localized indigenous employment and workforce development is done correctly and proactively engagement at all levels is reached, the key to unlocking positive return on investment or a decrease in cost of construction is a merely a formality and the renewable sector would skyrocket. Now, 
Unfortunately, in my experience, the appetite or engagement for localised Indigenous employment is minimal at best. Even within a tight employment market, and in turn, most Indigenous communities within these regions are left behind as the pressure to construct these large scale renewable energy projects gains momentum. Aboriginal communities such as Warrabinda, I mean, Raymond touched on Sherberg a little while ago, such as Warrabinda lies on the edge of the Bowen Basin in central Queensland and has well over 85% unemployment. These communities could see the flow on effects of project localised Indigenous employment and workforce development strategies developed in conjunction with surrounding renewable projects, whilst developing a bus in, bus out type of approach to workforce engagement. I've not only had, I've, I have not only had the pleasure in engaging with traditional owners and other community stakeholders on a holistic level, but I have been witness to well over 30% local Indigenous employment across many works packages. <laughs> As I hear the ever-present questions, including the how do you and the why do you, I'm continually asking why not? Why not? It only makes commercial and economic sense. But it all ticks all the critical boxes, including native title, Indigenous land use agreement compliance and traditional owner engagement. Renewable and construction companies that not only embrace, but increase engagement within local Indigenous communities play witness to a distinct improvement across all employment areas, including retention, training, development, and diversity. Those companies that embrace innovation and change the way they engage Indigenous employees Throughout the HR life cycle, we can see a decrease in the cost of construction as fly-in, fly-out costs such as flights, accommodation, and other unrelated costs are reduced. Other such benefits include a reduction in presenteeism and furthermore attrition, as it is well documented a workforce that is indigenous to the project area are more engaged and more invested. Project costs such as employee-based mobilization and accommodation costs that are redirected towards proactive strategies to increase indigenous, local indigenous employment and workforce development can drastically improve engagement and retention in line with the nature of, the, of a local, localised indigenous workforce within, within the project landscape, while, while decreasing dependency on welfare and creating social economic growth long after practical completion. Now, in my opinion, the only way to create a true Indigenous employment and workforce development strategy is to create a sense of proactive urgency throughout the contractor base and gain an initial confirmation and guarantee on the number and type of jobs available. Only through this method can you gain a true level of dedication to local Indigenous employment. You cannot, you cannot merely invest in training a set, of, a set group of candidates on the hope they become employed. You must engage and guarantee jobs up front whilst developing the workforce to suit. We've all heard the training, we've all heard the saying training for training's sake, yeah? One such method of developing strong localised Indigenous employment and workforce development strategies is to engage an Indigenous business that has the resources to provide a platform now, whether it be a managed workforce provider or a contractor based model to not only attract and develop a true localized indigenous workforce. A business that has the ability to perform at all levels of stakeholder engagement, whether it be traditional owner, traditional owner group, funding body or community health center, as no one can do it alone and forming the right alliances is vital to the success of any project. As a renewable industry looks to innovation to fast track construction timeframes across the industry, I can't help but wonder if local, localised Indigenous employment and workforce development strategies were more widely utilised as a way to reduce costs associated with large scale projects. Would we be experiencing the same construction bottlenecks in this sector? 
Now, engagement with traditional owners and Indigenous businesses across a project footprint. Now, thanks to, thanks to all levels of government implementing what we call Indigenous Procurement Policies, or IPP, there is a real focus on business community, businesses community for the engagement of Indigenous businesses within the procurement process, right? However, the question I'm constantly asking the business community is, what really makes up an Indigenous business? Or for that matter, a meaningful partnership with, a, with, a, with an Indigenous business? This isn't a new concept at all. The wider business community, especially in Western Australia, where the native title system lends itself to true commercial partnerships, has been looking to the traditional owner groups for some time. This process only maximises business opportunities across, across their footprint. Mechanism to provide social economic improvement, unlocking opportunities. Now, on the surface, this seems to make good business sense, right? So partnering with a TO group often results in market leverage, providing you and your business access to boardroom tables, often only reserved for big business. However, if not done correctly with the right moral fortitude, it can be devastating to not only business operations, but your own personal brand. Engagement with traditional owners. Yes, it's a long-term concept and yes, it takes commitment. But if done correctly, commercially driven ROI is huge. Not to mention the employee of choice and diversity benefits to an organization. Now, Another added benefit and sometimes hidden but minimise lengthy delays in cultural heritage or native title issues that often bottleneck this bottleneck the sector, all while being provided with a local local workforce, a workforce that is indigenous to the project area and who are 100% invested in the project. Now, in, in conclusion, <laughs> in this area, this area is a real passion of mine, right? I hadn't already picked up on it in the last 10 or 15 minutes. I naturally see the benefits for any organisation willing to invest. However, my challenge together with those that advocate for increased Indigenous engagement is to keep educating the market in the long-term benefits and ROI. At the end of the day, folks, only through education can you keep learning and adapting. Thanks, guys. That's any questions. Thank you, Peter. That was so informative and can clearly, clearly see your passion. There's, there's absolutely no confusion there. Um, I wonder if we can just perhaps expand on, on one point. And it was something that Ramon, prior to your presentation, spoke very um, strongly about as well, is that direct, genuine engagement with community. Yeah, no, definitely. It's, it's certainly often the, the genuine engagement with communities often, often clouded clouded with preconceived ideas right so uh, a, a construction company or, or or a proponent or a principal contractor will go into a community with a preconceived idea or a or a, or an outcome wanting an outcome i want to employ this many people or i want to get this many businesses on board real community engagement you take that lens take that lens away you need to go in and want to engage one-on-one -on -one without without a without a pre preconceived idea or without a notion or without an agenda it's just let's sit down underneath the tree let's have a conversation what do you what do you got where, where are you guys from tell me about your culture tell me about your history what, what got you here what's your father you know where you know there's there's been a lot of uh, we have a lot of discussions in central queensland in regards to the traditional owner group there from a obviously from a place of passion but from a from a true sense of caring from a true sense of empathy um, and wanting to know more a lot of people go into communities and and, and go into con a consultation type of approach to to say more than they what they hear to actually say you know we've got two eye, we, we've got a, one mouth and two eye two, two ears we need to sort of use them in in in, in the way it was intended you know, you, you need to shut this off and, and open these. So, yeah, that's true engagement to me. Very true. And I think it's something that we forget to do sometimes is really listen.